time of the year, Smile of Faith is a very special day today. A uh, very wonderful day. Uh, welcome to Bethany Christian Church, a family of faith growing in Christ, growing through service. Uh, if you have any visitors today, which we might, uh, if you would please sign the visitor card in front of you and if you rent, that would be wonderful. Where's Donna? We got our typical uh, history fact of the day today. Normally, you know me, I come up with horrible history facts. I always have something bad to happen on this day, but I can't admit it. Today's a pretty good day. Uh, in the year 324 AD, at the Battle of Adrianople, Constantine defeated Licinius. What's important about that fact is Constantine was the first Roman em emperor to convert to Christianity. There'll be more to come on that subject. Um, we had a wonderful vacation Bible school. Uh, had at one time, counting children is like counting bees at a beehive. <laughs> and they're like everywhere. And at one time I physically saw 42 kids over there in Tulsa Hall. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I think everybody had a blast. Uh, I think they learned some. I know they had a lot of fun. If you walk out that direction and you see about a zillion water balloon uh, hearts, that's probably because of me. Forgive me. When you walk back after two or three and after a year, we'll probably have them all up. We'll try to work on that better, actually. Um, I'd like to recognize the people that work on Vacation Bible School and the great job they did. Uh, Becky and Jean Ford did a wonderful job organizing it. Yeah. 
done as we pray the words that he taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven,
do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But I hate what I do. If I do not, if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but is sin living in me. I know nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. For I have a desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not good, is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do. This is keeping me doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For my inner being, for in my inner being I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work with the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man am I! Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Lord, sometimes we are certain that we don't have any more to give, that we have exhausted ourselves and have nothing left. Jesus promises those who are worn out, those who feel they have nothing left, that if they trust in him, they will find his yoke easy and his burden light. This promise can follow us and allow us to go the extra mile, to dig a little deeper, and even when we think that we have nothing to left to give. Please bless these offerings as a symbol of our sharing your word.
what it means to be with God. It's called, I've got the joy, 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 joy. All right, and if the congregation members know the song you want to sing along with me, that would be great and probably make it sound a little better. All right. One, two, three. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart.
those here at Bethany Christian Church, but with churches around the world in sharing the burden and the yoke of the kingdom of God. Let's prepare for our time of communion as we sing our communion hymn number 393, One Bread and One Body.
searching. As we gather around this table to break the bread, we realize our own brokenness, our dreams and desires, our proudest accomplishments lay defeated in life's dust. Our own internal conflicts tie us in knots and keep us from doing the right and the good. Yet, thanks to Jesus Christ, this bread also reminds us of Christ's life. Christ's life that was broken to give us healing. That Jesus was delivered to death, that we might be delivered from death. We come called by the Spirit of the risen Christ, knowing that Christ will give us rest. We came to take, we come and take upon the yoke of the one who is gentle and humble of heart, casting aside the world's heavy burdens to receive Christ's yoke of love. Amen.
prepared in memory of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Tomorrow, we remember the birth of our country 235 years ago, and those who over the years have sacrificed for its life and for freedom. Here today, we remember and give thanks to your Son, who sacrificed his life that all mankind who believe in him may live sin-free forever. Bless this cup, symbol of his blood, and us as we receive it in our renewed vow of belief. Amen. For as often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we proclaim Christ's death and resurrection until he comes again. Most of you are familiar. 
familiar with the uh, old gospel song, Softly and Tenderly. A new tune was written in the 1970s and enjoyed some uh, usage then, but it's all sort of fallen out of use now. I'd like to do it for you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am 
gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. A few days ago, I got the opportunity to go out and play some golf with Rod Grundy. And I gotta tell you, the first three holes went fantastic. I was playing the best golf I had played probably ever, which was especially surprising considering I hadn't played in a long, long time. Three straight pars. I was feeling pretty good about myself. We get to the fourth hole and Ron says, now, be careful. You don't want to go long on this hole because it's about a 100-yard drop on the back of the green. It's a 107-yard hole. So I say, yeah, I've played this course before and I get exactly that. I know what's back there. I've been down the hill. I'll come up short. Tell myself that. Tell myself. Keep it short. Keep it short. Keep it short. Swing. And the ball goes screaming. Probably the longest pitching wedge I've hit in my life. Well over the green, well down the hill. Reminds me of the reading that Tom gave us from Romans this morning. I tell my body to do this, but then it does that. Golf is actually a great exercise. If, if you want to learn humility or learn about your body not doing what you tell it to do or the ball not doing, Golf is perfect for it. I was feeling pretty good until I slint, sent that pitching wedge screaming over the green. Tell my body to do one thing and it does the exact opposite. Also relates us to the scripture reading from the gospel this morning. Jesus' words about the children. The children in the marketplace who say, We played the flute for you and you didn't dance. So we sang a dirge for you and you didn't mourn. The children in the marketplace represent this generation that Jesus is referring to. This people who want to set the rules. Who want to say, this is what you should do. These people who want to say, I'll play the flute and then you have to dance. Or I'll play a dirge and then you have to mourn. They've completely and totally separated the act of playing the flute in joy and that resulting in dancing, or the act of playing a dirge while mourning over something worth mourning over from the acts itself. They think you just play the flute and people will dance. You play a dirge and people will mourn. But that's not the way the world works. There are things worth dancing over. There are things worth celebrating. There are things worth joy. The baptism this morning, celebrating our freedom tomorrow. But there are also things worth mourning over. We're mindful of Lewis Crawford during this time and the process of mourning that has already begun. There are things that are worth dancing for and there are things that are worth mourning and there are things that just are. We don't get to say, everybody get up and dance. Or, children, will you sing this song loudly? It doesn't always go the way we want to because first you have to feel that joy. You have to feel that peace that passes understanding in your heart before you can really sing it out. You have to have felt pain to be able to mourn, to be able to feel sorrow. And Jesus is saying, you think that things just follow certain rules. You think that you can just look and say, this is this and that is that. But it's not that way. Look at you. You sit around thinking that all that matters is what you think. What you say. You sit around saying, John can't be anybody special. He doesn't drink anything. He doesn't eat anything. The only person who could do that would have to have a demon. So John has a demon. But Jesus isn't anything special either. He does the exact same thing everybody else does. He eats and drinks. He's just a drunken, a drunkard and a glutton. That's all Jesus is. He eats with tax collectors and sinners. So they set up these rules so that nobody could possibly be good enough. If you show yourself to be truly holy and truly separate and reliant only upon God, well then you have a need. And if you show yourself to be one of the people, then you're just nothing special. You're just like everybody else. Jesus has a warning for those people and Jesus says, you can say all you want. Wisdom isn't about what you think. Wisdom isn't about talking wise words. It's not about showing off what you think. 
Wisdom is shown by her actions. Jesus said, what are you doing? What are you doing for people who are in need? What are you doing that shows you are wise? Do you live a life that is wise? Or do you, do you just live a life by certain sets of rules? Jesus says, wisdom is shown by her actions. And then Jesus says, praise you, Lord. I praise you that those who this world thinks are wise and who are learned, that they don't get your revelation. Because they're so busy being caught up in their own wisdom. They're so be busy being caught up in their own learning and in showing off and in saying, nope, he's not the Christ. He's not the Messiah. No, he can't be Elijah because such and such or because this and this. Because, well, the Messiah is supposed to dance or the Messiah is supposed to mourn. And they didn't do it when we expected them to. And this Jesus, this Jesus doesn't look like any Messiah to us. He eats with tax collectors. He eats with sinners. He goes around with folks that you shouldn't go around with. And he hasn't shown any signs of any kind of hostile takeover. He hasn't shown any signs that he's preparing to overthrow the Roman oppressors. He can't possibly be the Messiah. You've hidden it from the wise and the learned. But wisdom is shown by her actions, and you've allowed the children, you've allowed those who are simple to understand. You have given them your revelation. That I go around healing the sick. I go around helping those who are desperate. Those who feel like they are worthless. Those who are tax collectors and sinners. Those who honestly need healing and recognize their need for healing. Lord, I praise you that you do that. That you show yourself to them. And then he says to those who have ears to hear. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Come and learn from me, for I am gentle and I am humble. Come, take my yoke upon you. It is easy. But what camp do we fall into? Do we fall into the camp that says we already know everything, we already understand everything, we've got it all together, or do we fall into the camp that says, I'm weary. I'm bored out. And I don't know if I have anything left. I come to you, Jesus, just as I am. This is all I have. And I trust in you. I don't understand. A lot of times I do find myself confused and befuddled by this world. But I trust you. I trust in you and in your word that if I will take up your yoke, you will give me the strength. You will help me make it through. And you will show me a better way. A way that is gentle and humble and guided by love. Which camp do we find ourselves in? Amen. If there are any here today who would like to say, I want to take off this yoke. I want to be a part of this kingdom of God. I want to be a part of what Jesus has offered. I want what is easier. I am heavy burdened. I am confused. I don't know what's going on, but I need someone I can trust in. We invite you to come forward and make a profession of faith. If there's anyone who would like to join together with this body of Christ as we lighten one another's yokes and burdens, we invite you to come forward and join together with us. And if there's anyone who would like to make a reaffirmation of faith, to rededicate their life, to living out, lightening the burden for others, and admitting when we are weary and tired, we invite you to come forward and do so as we stand and sing to the God who has always been and who will always be. Let's stand and sing God of the Ages, number 725, verses 1, 2, and 4. Let's stand and sing.
service to celebrate the freedom that we have here. If you'll please bow for our benediction, we'll bless the food and go in and eat, and then we'll have our celebration. Let's bow. Lord, we thank you so much that we have freedom, that we have freedom through you and in this land. We ask that you bless this food, that it will nourish our bodies to go out and extend your freedom to all who are in need of us, of it. And Lord, we thank you for all the blessing you have shown us. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.